Welcome to the third video regarding the upstream model. As you know, on samples, you have this model concerning the upstream oil and gas. On the model view, you see there are five detailed submodels. Now I will show how to build a model from scratch using components to make submodels. I will focus on these five submodels. There are two ways to import components as submodels. One way is using this submenu on the toolbar. You need advanced user interface to do that. But the easiest is to open the component catalog in a separate studio window. Here you can see many of the components being available in this component library. In this library there is some information regarding how to use it and so on. But the most important and useful here is the ability to drag each of these components into another model. So we make another studio window. Now I have two studio windows open simultaneously. So this is my new studio window and here I want to build something looking like this model here. So we switch to this empty one and open this component library where it's available. The first component we want to import is a production import. So we find the production import here under import components. Before importing this component, you should do two things. First of all, your file should be saved. In this case, I save it on an upstream directory. I call it upstream test. Then, when the file is saved, you should copy the Excel file into the same directory as you saved this file. Under your documents, you will find the directory My Simulations, and under there, you find the samples. On the samples directory, you will find this oil and gas inputs. This one you can copy and paste into your new directory or wherever you want to save it. In my case, my upstream location. I paste it here and we are ready to import the component. So we go back to the component library. Here I click the component, then I release the mouse button and I drag it into my studio diagram. Here I release it and there you see I'm now creating a new submodel with the name production import. As you see, this submodel is undefined. That's most probably because of the series variables we are using in it. So by right clicking this one, then choose open diagrams, you will open the diagrams. You could also double click here on production import. As you see here, the series variables, they have this question mark. I can double click one of them to see that this one says series variables require a series resolution to be specified. This series resolution is possible to find under your project settings. Here you choose the tab time measurement and you can set the series resolution. Let's choose one year for this time. Now you see we no longer have any error messages and we are reading the data from the Excel file. Then, if you have opened the diagrams for this production, you can close it again by pressing the cross, not the red one, but this one here. Then we are back to our root diagram. We can have a look here. Now we have imported this production import component and made a submodel out of that one. The four others that remain, we do it the same way for them. The next one is eco import. So I click it, then drag it, and I position it. Same with Campix import. Click it and drag it. Eco prep, that's located here. And you see this one, this has a question mark. That's not because of any series variables or anything. If I hover the mouse, you will see there are some unconnected imports. I know they should come from these models. So I simply connect them and I accept all bindings. And then you see it's well defined. If looking here, you see the last one is the original production value. We go back here and we want to position it here. So same for this one. Click it, drag it and connect imports. This is how you can build your entire model. Let's have a short look at the variables here. We can open the diagrams for eco prep. And this one, for instance, you see it has now been defined as a reference to another variable. This is the output from the eco import. Then some calculations are being made and so on. And one of the results from this component is a liquid price RT. This is a small calculation. And what's important here 
is that the name is liquid price RT, meaning any component with an input named liquid price RT or underscore liquid price RT can receive this output directly into the submodel. Let's look at where this one goes. We go back to the shared diagrams into the orange production value, open diagrams, and here you see liquid price RT. It refers to ecoprep liquid price RT underscore, meaning it's an output. This one starts with an underscore, meaning it's an input. By using these underscores, we can have the same name on the input and the output. For instance, to make chains of the same component in several steps. If you want to follow these values, as an alternative to jumping up and down like this, you can use this precedence and dependence. Then click the variable you want to follow, and you see this one. It is used here, liquid sales revenues. Then this one is selected. You can also go back to the previous one. That will go into the parent eco prep submodel. By clicking here, I go from this submodel to the eco prep, like this, and it selects this variable. Thank you for watching.